So a negative cubed is negative. Negative times negative times negative. That's negative. Then you multiply that negative by a negative, which gives you positive. Okay. And the bigger that negative is that I put in for x, the bigger the positive value that I get out for y. Okay. Let's translate this information onto the graph. As x approaches infinity, f of x, or y, approaches negative infinity. As x goes this way, y goes this way. So we'll see this kind. Right means we're going down. What about when you move to the left? Well, as x gets bigger and bigger negative, y gets bigger and bigger positive, so we should see this kind of a thing. Okay. These two arrows right now, are just, they're just guides. They're telling us where the graph should go ish, right? To go towards about it this way. Your graph does not have to go through these arrows. All right. I only mention it because it's been a confusion in the past year, so I just wanted to address that. So we've got the end behavior. The end behavior is correct. Um, so that's done. What do we want to plot some points? A point here and here and here and here. How do I find those points? Put in a number for x. Put in a number for x. Which number do you have to put in for x? Tell me it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can just 
pick anything for x that you want, and it tells you what the y is, uh, and then you plot that point. You probably don't want to pick a number like 7 for x, right? Because what you're going to have to do, you have to cube 7. That's going to be huge. Right? Whatever uh, 49 times 7 is, I don't know. That's going to be really big, and it's going to be off the charts, off the graph. So let's stick somewhere near the origin. Probably it's just the, the easiest thing to do. Right? I'm going to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm going to put those values in for x. But I'm going to do it really quickly because I'm going to use synthetic substitution. So I'm going to put in, put in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I'm going to use synthetic substitution to do that. How do I set up my synthetic substitution right now? I'm going to write some numbers here. What's the first number I write now? What's that? A negative 1. Why a negative 1? So once we write the x's in descending order of, of bigness of, of their power, right? x cubed first, then x squared, then x, and then your constant. Then we write down the coefficient. So the coefficient of x cubed is what? What's next? Zero. zero. Good. If you got tricked and thought it was five, that's okay. Why is it zero? Why is it not? Why don't we just put five now? Because you have to put in a zero for the like whatever. Yeah. To the second power, x squared. So there's zero x squared. Okay, now what's next? Zero again, because we have zero x's, right? Negative one x squared or x cubed, zero x squared, zero x. Now what's next? Five, right? Now we're we're down to our constant. Now, if you're going to use direct substitution, just put numbers in for x and figure out what it is. Uh, you don't have to do all this. I right? put zero. Uh, but if you use synthetic substitution, yes, you do, yeah. Um, can you guys just re like, reteach that area right there? Because I got lost. Like, I don't know like, why you got the negative one and then you got zero. You know. Let's, uh, I'm going to make one up to show you. Just because I was weird with all the blank spaces in there. So let's say we have g of x is equal to um, 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 3x minus 4. Here's how synthetic substitution works. We make sure that we write it uh, in descending order of the powers. So the highest power first, then the, the next highest one after that, next highest one after that, and constant will always be last. Okay? So we bring down our coefficients 2, then 5, then negative 3, then negative 4. Let's say I want to put in the number 1 into this function. Let's see what happens. Bring down the 2 first. 1 times 2, okay, that's the that's first step in every synthetic substitution. 1 times this number that we bring down here. So 1 times 2 is 2, and then we add. We get 7. 1 times 7 is 7. Put it there, then we add, and we get 4. 1 times 4 is 4, and we add, we get 0. That is the final. Right? So that's the final output. Okay, so for this function, G of 1, when I put 1 into this function, I get 0. Um, do one more just to show you again what it looks like. Put in 2, okay? So we do this the same thing, only with 2. 2 times 2 is 4. We add, we get 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Add, we get 15. 2 times 15 is 30. Minus 4 is 26. Of two is thirty, or sorry, twenty-six. Right, so this would give us a point one comma zero. So give us a point two comma twenty-six. Now the reason for the zeros is if there is no x squared term, it was just two x cubed minus three x minus four. We still need a placeholder for that x squared term. So now this would be a zero. There is no x squared term, but we do need that placeholder. Like, you have to go through that multiplication step for synthetic substitution to work. So, now, these don't work anymore. They don't apply, because we, we've changed the function all, all around here. Different example. None of this stuff works anymore. 
Now, we don't have any x squared terms, so we, we need to put a placeholder there. We can say thing over. 1 times 2 is 2, add, we get 2. 1 times 2 is 2, add, we get negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and the final is negative 5. You can put 1 in there, and you'll find that it's negative 5. Um, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3 times 1 is 2 minus 3, that's negative 1, minus 4 is negative 5. So in this example, we have negative x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 5. So we have those two zeros in there. Okay. For the function like this, you don't have to use synthetic substitution. It's such a simple function. You just have to cube a number and then add 5. Okay. Or cube a number and make it a negative and then add 5. But I just wanted to make sure we went over this. So we'll do negative 2 down negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Then we add and multiply by negative 2. Negative uh, 4. Negative 4. Uh, negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. Plus 5 is 13. Use synthetic substitution to find these five points. Negative 2 comma 13, negative 1 comma 6, 0 comma 5, 1 comma 4, 2 comma negative 3. Negative 2. Connect your points with a smooth curve from left to right. So we've got the end behavior correct. We have those points plotted, and now we want to connect it with a smooth curve from left to right. Find the leftmost point, connect it to the next leftmost point, and work your way all the way to the right, making sure it's a nice smooth curve, not straight lines between these points. We need to make sure that we go up and to the left and down and to the right. If our points make us, makes it look like we're going up and to the right, then we should reinvestigate either our end behavior or our points. Okay. Figure out which one of those is possibly off. Right. Well, here's my leftmost point. I'm going to work my way to the right. Here's the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And there we go, a reasonable graph. Now, can I guarantee you that that's exactly what the graph looks like? No, I, I can't. Um, it could look like, all I need to do is make sure I have that right end behavior and those, those points are correct and I go through those points. It could look like, look like anything. I'm just not sure what it looks like. Maybe it's more curvy like that. Or uh, maybe it comes down and goes horizontal and then it goes down like Until we have more math, more knowledge, more ways to analyze this function, we 
you can't be any more specific than, well, I graphed a bunch of points, and it had the right end behavior. It's, it's as good as I can do for now. Right? So, it's number 42, drawn out, and every, yeah, every piece explained. I think I know what that call is. Yeah. <laughs> the problem at hand, f of x is equal to negative 4x to the fourth plus 9x squared minus 21 plus 7. Okay, and they want to put x as negative 2. Let's set this up ourselves. Actually, I'd, I'd like you, if, if you feel comfortable with synthetic substitution, and hopefully you're not staring at this problem already, um, to yourself, make a guess what you think the error would be that somebody might make in setting this up. Think about it for a whole seven seconds. What is it at the end? Is that a plus seven? seven? Yeah, oh, sorry. That's a plus yeah. seven. So somebody had to write this question. They made it up. They're trying to highlight some common errors that happen in, in this case, some synthetic substitution. Okay. So looking at this, think about what kind of an error might happen. What might they do or forget to do as they set this up. So let's us set this up. Okay. Uh, first, we have to write it in descending order of powers, which it is biggest, next biggest, next biggest, all the way down to the constant. So what's the first number we put here? Minus four. Minus four. What's next? Zero. Zero because. There's not an x to the third there, so we need a placeholder. Then negative 21, uh, then no. seven. No. Uh, nine. Uh, oh, yeah. Nine, negative 21, and seven. Well, I'm thinking that zero probably the thing that they're showing you happens wrong a lot, right? Uh, look at that. They didn't write down that zero. What's that? Carl, because it's smart to say. I did remember the nine. It's hard. It's too hard. Okay. Um, other questions? Homework? Yes? Can we go over the sample quiz stuff? As long as everybody's okay with passing in their homework, they're all done. Okay, let's pass those in.
Okay, so there's a property that says if we're multiplying two things together and raising it to a power, then each of those things can get that power. Something that happens a lot is, is when we use this property, students will oftentimes try and do two things at once. Here's the first thing, really. You're giving the negative one exponent to both of these. Okay? And then you simplify that, you combine those powers together. When you try to do both of those at once, and you're just a little iffy about it, the, the two steps at once a lot of times will result in something incorrect. So, um, if you're going to do two steps incorrectly, make sure you're doing this step in your head and say, oh, I'm raising this to the negative one. How do we put these two together? How do you raise a power to a power? What? Multiply. 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 Okay. And you have y squared to the third. Okay. The wrong question to ask is do I add or do I multiply? Right? Uh, the wrong question is, is this y to the sixth or is this y to the fifth? That's not the right question. This is what does this mean? Y to the sixth. Y to the second to the third means something times itself three times. That's y times y, and get three. This is a real power to a power, we're having this many groups of this many factors, that's just multiplication, we have six factors of y here. Okay. So when you raise a power to a power, you do multiply them together. So we handled that part of it. What's next? Okay, we got negative exponents. We don't like negative exponents. We like positive exponents. So how do we handle negative exponents? So a negative exponent really means that we have an x to the third in the denominator, not a numerator. Okay. So 12 over x to the third in the denominator. And why did the fourth still in the denominator? Because it didn't have a negative exponent. Uh, and we still have a y squared up here at a 15. Okay. This x to the negative 2 really belongs in the denominator. So x squared. This x to the negative 2 really belongs in the numerator. This one came up to the numerator. So it would be a negative or positive. This one came down. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we cancel as well. We can cross cancel two of these factors of y with two of these, leaving two factors of y or y squared down there. 
Anything else? 12 and 15 have a factor of 3 in common. 5 and 4. Okay, that's getting to be a mess. Let's just try and uh, sweep all of the stuff together that we have left. We have 4 times 1 times 1. That's 4. We have uh, 5. I like to put the numbers first. 5 times x cubed y squared. The numbers don't have any factors in common. There's no uh, x factors in common, no y factors in common between the numerator and denominator. Uh, nothing to combine. It's not like an x squared times an x cubed. Yeah. Single x to a power, single y to a power. There's just not anything we can do to make this any really prettier, so we stop. Or so the four and five, like, these uh, are the lowest. be a faster version of the homework problem we already did. I'm going to go back there to remind you. Right. End behavior, plots and points, connect with a smooth curve, working from left to right. What is end behavior? My 
might be helpful to just go ahead, before you start, write it in descending order of the powers of x. So negative x cubed first plus x. N behavior. As x approaches positive infinity, what values will y have? Will it go to positive infinity or negative infinity? What's that? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. Negative. We put in a positive number for x, we cube it, we multiply that number by a negative, it's just going to be negative. The bigger x is, the more negative y will be. So it goes off in this direction. If we go towards negative infinity, we let x go to negative infinity, then we'll have a negative number when we cube a negative number, and then multiply by negative, and that'll be positive, so it should go in that direction. And then we need to plot some points. We're going to plot some points at, uh, let's just say negative 1 is 0, and 1 is that. I can use synthetic substitution if we want. That's not a bad idea, especially if you want to do numbers like ones and zeros, it's not as hard. Uh, put a zero in for x, this is a zero for y. Put a one in for x, uh, negative one cubed is negative one, and negative one is one. Minus one, also zero. Okay, uh, and then a one cubed is one, negative one now, plus one is zero, so we get zeros for all of those. Negative one, zero, 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 one, zero. I just need to make sure that my that the end the left end of my graph goes up and to the left, and the right end of my graph goes right and down, down to the right. And then it goes through these three points with, this is important, a smooth curve. Is that? Okay. So here's an example of not a smooth curve. It's not a smooth curve. Not what this graph looks like for sure. Okay, all of the graphs of all these polynomials are smooth. It means they have no points like this. They're not pointy. Okay, so I need to come through this point, which I didn't do very well. I come from top left through this point, through this point, and through this point, and then go down this direction. Graph. Your graph might look a little different. It might look like this. Maybe you made these really big. I can't tell you that it doesn't like this. I have to use the plotting more points, which just at some point you got to stop plotting points. You just got to kind of make a guess at the in between stuff. Okay. The thing that's for sure about the in between stuff is that it's a nice smooth curve. Um, otherwise, we're going to have to make our best guess. What's 
said uh, that really important word that I keep uh, bringing up that starts with a D. Distribute. We're going to distribute everything in here to everything in here. We're going to distribute the U first to U squared. That's U to the third. Distribute the U, keep distributing it. Now we get negative 3 U squared. Distribute again to the 3. So we get 3 U. Now there's nothing past 3. 3 is the last term. It's the third and last term. So we move on to the next thing that we need to distribute. And that's the now that gives us 4u squared. We've been doing this for quite a while now. So we know we're going to do find like terms at the end. So I like the idea of taking 4u squared, and since it's a common term, a like term with 3 negative 3u squared, so I'll put it right here. So the, the next step when I find like terms, all the like terms are lined up. You know, 4u times negative 3u is negative 12u. That's a like term with, with 3u. Three, that's going to be 12, which is the first constant that we've seen. Okay, we can find like terms. U to the third. U squared. Negative 9u plus 12. However it looks when you do it, you need to just distribute everything from one foot to the other. It could be from left to right, right to the left, middle to the outside, whatever. As long as every pair that's possible gets made, we we'll put together. That's good. And then combine like terms in the end.